This specifically is a project we've been running for three years, which is digitizing the Hunt collection, which is a collection of images that have been assembled by uh, Ezra Hunt, which is actually five volumes. Each volume is about five albums within a volume. Um, we've worked out there must be probably between five and 10,000 individual objects within that collection. Um, the idea is to actually get the whole thing done, every single article, every single entry, every single image, but done page by page so that when they're online people can actually turn the pages of the collection rather than just have a sort of jumble of images with no context. This was basically a man's private scrapbook, so what sort of things did he collect? Um, they seemed to be very obsessive, the collectors back then. Um, what they tended to do was just um, religiously put everything in order uh, around an area and that was one of my inspirations for Bath in Time was to actually find everything to do with a certain subject or area whether it was a photograph or an engraving or a newspaper cutting but, but so that people who wanted to learn and understand better about where they lived or where they worked they'd have all the information there from all the different sources and in this particular resource here which has really been used by so many people researching who've published and written about Bath um, what, what they've basically done is taken a book which is called Rambles Around Bath which was written in the sort of 1850s um, and that covers in detail the history of each area they've taken each page out stuck it in, in his album and then assembled and pasted up if you like around there all the images and information to do with that particular subject so it sort of leads you through the history of Bath um, people weren't necessarily recording events as such, they were mainly sort of recording a building. You know, there was a lot of sort of civic pride, um, so if a new church was built then it had to be a lovely picture of the new church looking magnificent, which is an example here um, that we're doing. Um, so there's lots of pictures like that, but they're all fascinating in their own right. This is going to be a, an amazing digital resource, as you say, for anybody doing research on the history of Bath. Um, Bath in Time exists not only to provide that service, but you can, in a commercial sense, go onto the website, choose an image you like and, and buy it, can't you? Yeah, you can. I mean, it's, it's an interesting one. With all these things, I mean, the, the seven years of work has gone into what is online so far. And I think there's about 28,000 images. So it has to sustain itself in some way. And obviously, the, the most important thing is to make sure the quality of the image is very, very high so that people who want to either buy reproductions for their own use or to publish have got a very good quality image to work from. So that's something that's very important to us. And yes, you can, if you wish, buy copies. But really, I think most people who go on there actually just enjoy finding out more about where they live and actually just you know, enjoying the images that are there. An important thing is that any proceeds that are raised are actually shared back with the collection. So the, so the actual people who've given me permission to photograph their work receive half the net profits. What that actually does in the case of the library here, where the substantial part of the collection is, is they reinvest it in, in the actual encapsulation and protection of the objects for future work. So you can actually handle these quite easily without touching what is in fact a very old and valuable object. Yes, one must make the point that although you could access these images at home via the internet, you still can come in and look at the real thing. Yeah, it's something I've taken quite seriously. Every single item on Bath in Time, it actually tells you the unique reference number for its own internal system. So if you look at an image, you want to see the original, it'll tell you where it is and what the institution actually calls it themselves so that they can go and get it out and so you can have a look at it.